Good morning. It is cold out again. It is January. It is freezing again. We are at Cadora State Park today near Hanover, Pennsylvania. Never been here. Uh, it is a uh, pretty sizable park here surrounding Lake Marburg. So we are on the Marianne Trail and uh, setting off here to walk around and explore a little bit. Very icy today. I've got the uh, cleats on. So here is Cadora State Park. Uh, so the gigantic uh, Lake Marburg uh, right in the middle. The far end here is a dam. It looks amazing on uh, Google Maps. Um, I don't see any kind of a road that we can get there. Um, they block off this road. There's a road in this way and a road in that way that are blocked off. I'd love to go check it out. I may drive by on the way out. Looks like the uh, ranger trail here might be the closest you can get to it. We're going to start out today though down here doing the Marianne Furnace Trail. So we are parked here along Black Rock Road. Let's go. So the first split here, I'm going to go left, and it'll take us clockwise around the lake, and we'll be close to the lake first. Really very glad that I wore the yak tracks today. Uh, the trail is very packed down, very icy. It is January 12th. There is some ice on the lake. Um, just like Memorial Lake, there's an area it's uh, designated for ice skating. I didn't bring my skates today. Uh, it's been below zero for quite a few days here, but I don't think long enough. It doesn't look like we've got, you know, four to six inches of ice here, but a lot of little paths down to the lake here. Looking forward to. I'll bet this is icy. Did wear the. I did wear the waterproof uh, topos today as well. All right, so close here. Looks pretty solid. But uh, definitely some open areas out there, so I'm not going to go too much farther. I don't want to get a soaker in my first five minutes. Another good spot of ice here, but not really. So a little bit about Lake Marburg here. Uh, wasn't always here. Um, the Cadoras Creek was flowing through, and um, in the 1960s. Uh, the Gladfelter Paper Company uh, paid for and built a dam on the eastern edge of the lake. Um, it was to provide water for their paper plant and for the nearby town of Spring Grove. Um, in 1966, they closed up the dam and backed all this up. Uh, lake Marburg is a, uh, about 1,300 acres. 
in size and it has about 26 miles of shoreline. Why is it called Lake Marburg, you ask? Well, there was a town called Marburg that uh, eminent domain and all that. Uh, they kind of took over the town and relocated everyone and um, the town of Marburg is under this lake right now. Uh, kind of a uh, submerged ghost town, if you will. So at this bridge here, trail kind of splits. Marianne goes off this way and loops back to the parking lot. I want to explore some more. I suspect this path goes up to the campground, so I'm gonna go check that out. So that path brought us up to uh, kind of a big recreation area. There are campsites here for trailers. So this is part of the campground, yeah. I see the numbers here. Uh, we got big pull-ins for RVs. We keep heading over though, there's a bridge that spans the middle of uh, Lake Marburg. So I think I'm gonna go and try and get to that and maybe cross it. So I was just about to cross the bridge here and found a little fishing pier. Kind of goes out parallel to the bridge here. <clears throat> Visitor center and everything are across the way. That's why I kind of wanted to head over there, but uh, this could be a real beautiful view of the lake. Uh, so hiking's probably the least uh, big activity here. So, you know, I'm here kind of in the wrong season. Uh, but with the foliage down, it gives you good views of the lake and everything if you do hike the trails. Um, I did start out on the Marianne Trail. I might go down that way and hit up the uh, Lajo Trail if I have time before I get out of here. It kind of depends how far I walk here. But um, yeah, it's there, there's some hiking, but there's a lot of motor, uh, like, like uh, dirt biking trails, mountain bike trails, uh, fishing, boating. Uh, water, all kind of water sports is really what uh, I would say this is probably better known for. But here's the bridge. I think we'll walk across there. It looks like a little island and another span and then the visitor center. But huge lake here, 1,300 acres. We just scratched the surface here at the west end. It goes way out there to the Gladfilter Dam. We're up on the bridge now. That's the little pier that I was at straight down below. So looking east here. This is our center and all is up there and then looking west where we came from. All right, so back in the woods following the Marianne Trail again. Still going uh, clockwise here to complete our loop. The Marianne Furnace Trail is a yellow blaze, but there are other little signs here, very well marked, which is great. It looks like a popular trail from all the footprints. Kind of bonded into the ice here. I'm almost back at the uh, parking lot here for the Marianne Trail. Um, Marianne Furnace Trail, Marianne Furnace. Um, was, I think, the first forge west of the Susquehanna uh, back in the 1700s there when they were forging metals and such. Um, there are no remnants of it left, uh, so I don't think there's anything to see here on the way to the trailhead. If there is, I'll let you know, but I am going to hop in the car and motor on over to another trail here called the Lajo Trail. Uh, I think that's just about a mile and a quarter trail uh, down along the lake again. So I'm going to add that in as a uh, bonus trail on this hike. All right, so we're starting out on the Lajo Trail now. This is on the uh, south side of uh, Lake Marburg. And um, this one seems like it's going to be a pretty easy uh, about a mile long trail here. Um, there are 
numbers and a little guide to pick up so if you have kids it's going to be great because there's a lot of information uh, in this guide uh, that corresponds with numbers on the trail kind of a self-guided um, nature trail kind of thing so um, I just wanted to spend more time here so I'm going to give it a shot and maybe I'll give you some uh, quick nature facts while I'm out here Great little trail here, right along the uh, water. So this tree here, though, is tagged here, number five. Now look at my Cadorus Nature list here. How many splits are in this tree? Uh, let's see, at least five. Maybe some are hiding, but I'm going to say five. Uh, many explanations, such as too many seeds in one place or an old stump spouting new growth. What do you think caused this tree to split so many times? Comment below and tell me because I don't believe they give you the answer. All right, so I've seen like videos where you get a real like cool sound when you throw a rock out onto the ice. Check this out, hopefully this comes across well. Kind of a pew pew noise. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Oh, this could be a big rock. Yeah, a little bit of an echo in here. Almost getting that pew pew a little bit there when the ice cracks. A little bit there. It was uh, maybe holding me, but it was cracking a little bit. So don't ever risk it. Don't ever risk uh, that. <laughs> All right, so coming off the trail are some steps, some obelisks here. Yeah, up here. This area is the Mannheim Union Burial Ground, one of the oldest graveyards in York County. Yeah, so the headstones here, according to my little thing here, all these headstones were moved over here. Uh, there's vandalism. So they basically brought all the headstones here. Got a sign with everybody. He was buried here. So you can see a lot of these headstones, but here's the dates and everything. 1700, late 1700s to mid 1800s, it looks like for everybody. Uh, latest. Burial actually looks like 1789. No, sorry, uh, 18s, 1867. Yeah, this is the latest uh, that people were buried here, but uh, all the headstones are right here. This is the burial ground, so the sheet says uh, the exact lo locations of the graves is no longer known, but I guess that a vandalism problem here. Pretty cool. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, 
love how it chirps across the ice. Definitely missed a couple numbers here playing in the ice, but uh, here several species of woodpeckers remain in our forest through the cold days of winter. They tap on the dead trees looking for an insect snack. Their tongues wrap the whole way around their brain to protect it while they're tapping away. So that's their concussion protection, I guess. Their tongues wrap all the way around their brains. I gotta go look that up. I thought I read before that they had some kind of, uh, I don't know, some kind of honeycomb pattern in their skull or something to help protect it. But um, yeah, like, I mean, they've got brains and fluid that you would think move around and, and they could get concussed as well. But their tongues in the back wrap all the way around their brains. I'm gonna read more about that tonight. Alright, so having the cross on the bridge there is uh, the only bad part there about the uh, Lajo Trail. Uh, when you do complete it clockwise though, it brings you to this nice beach for one more view on Lake Marburg. I'll tell you what, this has been fantastic. Uh, Cadoris, another one of those state parks that was uh, fairly close to my house. It only took an hour to get here. Uh, that I just didn't know was here. So a lot of good history here. Um, great walk, great woods, very well maintained trails. Um, it's probably gonna be a lot more fun in the summertime, honestly, with uh, the boating, uh, some swimming, camping, uh, disc golf, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for the winter, for a weekday, it was not crowded and I pretty much had the trails to myself, which you know I love, I can just, bring a better video to you if that's the case. So uh, goodbye from Cadora State Park. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like, tell a friend. Um, we'll see you next time. If you've got a problem with Canada Goose, then you've got a problem with me, and I suggest you let that one marinate.